everybody and welcome to the channel it's polyester here and today the devs shared some statistics with us these all pertain to those sweeping changes that they made to the game when they introduced patch 6.1 to the game you'll remember that these are the things that they change in the game like uh reducing the amount of uh speed versus speed that a survivor would get when they got hit by a killer uh, making pallets break faster when killers kick them those kind of changes but also all the wide amount of shaking up of the meta that they did changing about 40 different perks in the game nerfing some buffing others and basically they want to show us now that they have captured a significant amount of data and show us how this has changed the game that we play today so they have this uh, article here what kind of impact did 6.1 have on the game and if you click that link it takes you to the official dead by daylight forums where we have this post that we're going to read through together this past july we released quite possibly our largest balance update yet when we changed 40 perks including the existing meta and at the same time we briefly introduced and later re-debuted matchmaking incentives which reward players for switching to whichever role is needed at the time. With so many changes at once, the dust, the dust still has not quite settled, but we're starting to get a picture of how the game will look moving forward. It's been a little over a month since the update went live, so we want to shed some light on the impact that the 6.1 update had on the game. Before we dive in, we want to remind you that these numbers are still changing each day, the numbers we share in this post will likely be obsolete within a few months. This also means that any recent changes may not be reflected in these stats. So here we go. First graphic here that we have is the most seen killer perk. Um, the highest used perk right now has a 19% usage rate. Previously, the most used killer perk was used 40% of the time. So right now, the most used perk in the game is Jolt. Second most used perk in the game is Scourge Hook Pain Resonance. And third most popular is Barbecue and Chili, which is interesting considering it doesn't give you that bonus blood point modifier anymore, but it still gives you some visual aura information across map to see where to head after you hook someone, where your next target should be. And so we're seeing here that the average kill rate for um, killers is 61% and was previously 53%. So I think this is right around where the devs want to be. I saw an article with Dave Richard a while ago, which he was saying that they were aiming for 60%. So this is right around there. Now, I would like to see some more intense information about this. I would love to see specific killer kill rates based on each individual killer, who's doing the best, who's doing the worst, and also on specific cases where we know that um, there is a, a learning curve, a skill cap to figure out how to use killers. Nor Nurse notoriously has a very low kill rate because she's hard to master initially, but once you get good at her and your skill cap comes up, it, then uh, you're able to wield her masterfully. I would love to see at different MMR rates, what the killer rate is for Nurse specifically. If they wanted to give that to us for everybody, that'd be great. But I'd love to see what the kill rates are for specific killers at different levels of MMR. All right, so uh, then it goes on to explain this graphic here. In Dead by Daylight, the killer should strike fear into the survivors, and part of this comes from being a big, scary-looking person or monster, while another part of this comes from their ability to kill you, before the 6.1 update, we found killers to be a little lacking, and as a result, we introduced several changes to improve killer quality of life and make them more deadly. And beyond that, we made significant changes to many of the most and least used killer perks. The result of these changes, the average kill rate, the percentage of survivors killed, rose by about 8%. So 61% kill rate means that the killers are killing 6 out of every 10 survivors that they see. Um... Let's see, uh, rose by 8%. This leaves killers on average within a range that we are comfortable with, making them deadly, but not oppressive. And more significantly, the variety of perks being used saw huge improvements. The previously most used perk, barbecue and chili, went from being used in 40% of all killer loadouts to only 17%. Jolt, meanwhile, climbed from 13% usage to 19%, and Scourge Hook Pain Residence dropped slightly, going from 20% to 17%, and 
just barely beating barbecue and chili for the number two spot. The other 10 most used perks include Sloppy Butcher, Save the Best for Last, Overcharge, Thanatophobia, Call of Brine, No Ed, and Corrupt Intervention. Overall, the disparity between the highest and lowest usage rates is significantly smaller than before, and we intend to continue monitoring and fine-tuning perks as needed going forward, but already we're seeing far more variety than in the old meta. All right, now we're going to go to Survivor's graphic here. Most seen Survivor perk with a 21% usage rate is self-care. Previously, the most used perk at 42% was, um, was probably Dead Heart. I think that was definitely it. So uh, we have self-care in first place. Second most used Survivor perk is Dead Heart. Third most used is Windows of Opportunity. I don't remember if Windows was even on the graphic before. And so obviously these percentages have to add up. 61% plus 39% is 100%. So the average escape rate is 39%. Four out of every 10 survivors are escaping, basically. Previously, it was 47% of survivors were escaping. Survivors saw similar results following the 6.1 update. The previously most used perk, Dead Hard, fell from 42% usage to 19%, making it the second most used perk. Meanwhile, self-care remained a popular choice in some regions, but not others, securing it uh, the first place spot at 21% usage. A new contender entered the fray with Windows of Opportunity shooting up to 18% usage. Okay, so Windows probably was not on the graphic before. The other top 10 survivor perks include Live, Prove Thyself, Sprint Burst, Boon Circle of Healing, Borrow Time, Adrenaline, and Spine Chill. And much like the killers, the gap between the most and least used perks is much smaller than before, leading to a wider variety of perks used in each match. Now, I'll just point out one thing here, which I saw Peanuts touched on um, a forum's post about this. One thing he did say, which this part that he says, self-care remained a popular choice in some regions, but not others. He said that self-care is used more widely in non-English speaking regions. He didn't get more specific than that. So I don't know what areas he's talking about, but he said there's uh, definitely self-care being used more in non-English speaking area. So I can't tell you any more than that. But I will say that I also believe that these statistics are skewed because of that specific Rift challenge that requires you to enter the game using only the perk self-care and escaping, which may take multiple times. So I think that could be skewing the results of this self-care usage rate. Not entirely sure. And I also want to say to whatever dev that crafted that evil rift challenge and said hey remember this perk that we completely destroyed and made it nearly useless by by nerfing self-care what if we make a challenge where people have to use just that <laughs> and nothing else i was like oh my gosh i mean i guess we have had stuff like that like use only no mither and escape so it isn't you know as as sinister as i think it is as a plot but <laughs> Uh, I'm, I am not bringing only self-care, I'll tell you that. I'm bringing medkit with me. I'm going to have self-care as my only perk in the game, but I'm not going to rely on self-care to heal myself, I'll tell you that. What is it? It says, bring only self-care, heal yourself once in the game, and escape. I'm using my medkit for that. Anyway, I digress. Let's move on, shall we? I don't believe that self-care is number one, but anyway, let's see. Uh, next. This talks about the matchmaking time. The average killer wait time on chapter launch day was up to 240 seconds faster compared to without having any matchmaking incentives. And the average survivor wait time on chapter launch day was up to 40 seconds faster compared to no matchmaking incentives. Average queue time was 59 seconds, previously 91 seconds. I think that matchmaking is working phenomenally whether I pick Survivor or Killer, I get put into a match very quickly. So this system appears to be working for me at least. It just, I get a match and other times when I was waiting five, 10 minutes on stream to get put into a game, those days are gone. We get into matches fairly quickly and I'm happy to see it. Uh, I personally think that the matchmaking incentives work and it's been a brilliant addition to the game and I love it. All these changes have also impacted queue times. 
The distribution of players playing each role seems to be a lot healthier than before, causing the average queue time to drop to 59 seconds from 91 seconds. Yes, this isn't solely a factor of matchmaking incentives, because I think for the most part, survivors are the ones who are being offered the incentive, right? So uh, a lot more people are playing killer. A lot more people feel like they aren't out of their depth playing killer because of the changes to the game. They feel like they have more of a chance to compete. So definitely more people are playing killer than ever before. That seems clear. And then the matchmaking incentives are encouraging survivors to go into a game and subject themselves to a 39% escape rate. Here's your extra points. Thanks for being the fodder for our 61% killing killers. Anyway, um, we're pretty balanced in that regard, I would say. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of matchmaking incentives just yet since they only returned on long, um, a, ter a ton of data on matchmaking incentives just yet since they only returned on alongside the Resident Evil Project W chapter. However, we have some data to share on how impactful they can be. When a new chapter launches, we typically see more people trying to play the new killer than the new survivors. I completely agree. You always have to wait a long time to get a killer match on launch day. So I always just play survivor. Naturally, this causes killer queue times to skyrocket as there simply are not enough survivors to go around. And this most recent chapter was no exception. Once matchmaking incentives were activated, queued times dropped significantly. In the most extreme cases, the time taken to find a match decreased by up to four minutes for killers and up to 40 seconds for survivors. And we'll be watching closely over the coming weeks to see how matchmaking incentives affect matchmaking, but early signs suggest that they are very effective when they're needed most. We hope you enjoyed this peek behind the scenes as we reflect on our first meta shakeup. As a reminder, the numbers you see here are still changing every day and we'll keep monitoring and fine tuning over the next few months as everything settles. Until next time, the Dead by Daylight team. All right, so overall, I would say, you know, I think that this demonstrates, even though some of these changes may not have been popular, that it was necessary for the game balance and we had to give the devs the ability to make these broad changes for the health of the game, even if it made it harder for survivors. Um, I think that killers did need this help and they've, according to this data, they got them right about where they want them. So. I would like to see a deeper dive analysis on specific statistics, as I said, because I think there are a couple of killers who are uh, significantly stronger than the rest. So I'd like to see how everyone is performing. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the matchmaking times, the balance of the game. I feel a lot more powerful when I play killer uh, compared to the past. So, you know, we'll see where we go from here. Um, one thing that does surprise me is that for the survivor perk usage rate, I'm kind of shocked that off the record didn't make it into the top 10 because everybody said everybody's going to be running off the record now and it still didn't crack the top 10 here. So that's a surprise to me. Uh, prove thyself. You can see people are trying to make up for that extra generator time. That was another thing that they did when they, um, Put out patch 6.1 was add 10 seconds to each generator so you're seeing prove thyself come in more to try and claw that back um but yeah so that's where we're at um another thing see you see that like the top two perks here for gen regression require no kicking which i think this is why people were up in arms when they nerfed blast mine where they made it that if the killer didn't kick your gen, you still had to do 66% of a gen over again to get it back because killers have so many more options to regress gens without even touching them now. So I was glad to see that they um, they reduced the nerf on Blast Mine to now you only need 50%. I was pushing for 33% to get that, but it's a nice, nice balance to bring it to 50 in between. Maybe they'll find that they can put it back to, to 33 eventually, but you know, these are all slow processes of analysis and tweaks here and there. Um, 
again overall i'm happy with this big patch and the state of the game today and i hope to see more of these kind of changes in the future have it be a regular thing that they're constantly changing the game in some way here and there in this area and the other this perk that perk those kind of things because i believe it's necessary for a live game like dead by daylight to do so um just to keep things fresh and balanced but that's all i have for you today appreciate you all as always i appreciate your time you spend here with me on my channel hope you found that interesting and uh don't forget to take care of each other in and out of the fog and we'll see you next time bye bye it's a gen rush life for us it's a gen rush life for us set a hiding we do gens set our randoms we got friends it's a gen rush life